Create the sample Python package. To document a Python project, you first need a Python project. In this course, you'll use a toy implementation of a calculator package that returns floating point numbers. If you already have a Python project for which you want to generate your documentation, then feel free to use that project instead. If that's the case, you can skip this part and jump directly to section 4 of the course. Your example Python project will be small and consist only of one folder with two files in it, as seen on screen. Create the package folder and the two files right inside your project folder. Here's how the two files are created on macOS. And here's how on Windows Terminal. Then open calculations.py in your favourite code editor or IDE. Add the example code for some mathematical calculations that you use as the basis for your documentation. This code repackages some fundamental math operators into new functions that return the result as a floating point number. As seen on screen, you'll keep the second file, dunderinit.py, empty for now. It's here to help declare calculator as a package. Later on, you'll add package level doc strings in the file, which you'll also pull into your auto generated documentation. In the next section of the course, you'll add doc strings to your functions. This will set you up to allow you to generate documentation directly from these doc strings. Write and format your doc strings. The MK docstrings package can pull valuable information from your code base to help auto generate parts of your documentation. As the package name suggests, you'll need docstrings to accomplish this. It can also make use of type hints, so you'll reformat your function signatures and docstrings to use them. At this point, you don't have any docstrings in your function, so it's time to change that. In this section of the course, you'll write docstrings for your module, the contained functions, and your package. Let's start this process by taking a look at what a doc string is. Understand Python doc strings. Doc strings are your biggest help for documenting your Python code. They're built in strings that you can configure to hold usage instructions and information about your functions, classes, and modules. A Python doc string consists of text in between a pair of three double quotation marks. Most commonly, you'll read and write function, class, and method doc strings. In these cases, the doc string is located right below the line that defines the class, method, or function. This code shows an example doc string for a function called greet. The doc string starts with a single line description of the function's purpose, followed by more in depth information. As seen in the excerpt from the doc strings convention pep, which is linked to on screen. Doc strings can help to make the code that you're working with easier to understand. They provide information about code objects, and if you write them well, they will clarify the context and use of an object. You can access the information saved in a doc string using the built in help function. If you call help on any code object, then Python will print the object's doc string to your terminal. In the bpython REPL, this is presented on a separate screen, which you can exit by pressing Q. An object's doc string is saved in Dunder doc, and you can also inspect it there directly. This attribute contains your doc string, and you could read any doc string with Dunder doc. 
However, you will usually access it through the more convenient help function. Displaying a doc string with help also improves the formatting. Other types of doc strings, such as module and package doc strings, use the same triple double quote syntax. You place a module doc string right at the beginning of a file, and you write a package doc string at the beginning of a dunderinit.py file. These doc strings provide high level information about the module or package as directed by PEP257. The basic syntax for all Python doc strings is the same, although you'll find them in different locations based on what the doc string is documenting. In this course, you'll create function, module, and package doc strings. If your personal Python project contains classes, then you should document these as well using class doc strings. Doc strings were formalized in PEP257, but their structure isn't strictly defined. Subsequently, different projects have developed different standards for Python doc strings. MKDoc supports three common types of Python doc string formats Google style doc strings, the NumPy doc string standard, and the Sphinx doc string format. The Python handler for MKDoc strings uses Google style doc strings by default an example of which is seen on screen. The doc string should start with a one-line summary, and then have sections for a longer description if needed, followed by arguments, return values, and relevant exceptions that the function may raise. You'll stick with Google-style doc strings for this course, and in the next section, you'll add doc strings to your functions. Add function doc strings to your Python project. It's time to add Google style doc strings to your example functions in calculations.py. Start by writing your one line doc string, which should concisely explain the purpose of the function. After adding the initial description of your function, you can then expand the doc string to describe the function arguments and the function's return value. You can keep inspecting your functions by using help to peek at the automatic documentation that Python builds from the information that you add to the function doc strings. By describing the arguments and the return value and their types, you provide helpful usage information for programmers working with your code. Go on to write doc strings for all functions in calculations.py.
When you're done, you've successfully added the first stage of your project code documentation directly into your code base. But Python doc strings can do more than describe and document. You can even use them to include short test cases for your functions, which you can execute using one of Python's built-in modules. And that's what you'll see in the next section of the course. Write examples and test them using DocTest. Adding examples to your doc strings is good practice. Doing this clarifies how to use the functions, and when you stick to a specific format, you can even test your code examples using Python's DocTest module. Google suggests adding examples to your doc string under a heading called Examples, which works well for running doc tests and building your documentation using MKDocs. Head back into calculations.py and add example use cases to your function doc strings. Add a section called Examples, and with an extra indentation level, add example calls to the function you're documenting. You provide the input after the default Python REPL prompt, and you put the expected output in the next line. These examples will render well in your auto-generated documentation and add context to your function. You can even test them. Verify that your functions work as expected by executing the file using Python's doctest module. Here's the test running on Windows. And on macOS or Linux. If you don't see any output, then all of the tests passed. This is great, as you've successfully added doc tests to your function. If you change one of the numbers in an example, and run the test again, then you'll see what a failing test looks like. Don't forget to change the example back to the correct value. Revisit all of your functions and add doc tests in the same way as you did for add earlier on. When you finish writing doc tests for all your functions, run the test using doc tests to confirm that all of the tests pass. You've expanded the scope of your doc strings to be more comprehensive and valuable. To improve your code base even more, in the next section, you'll add type hints to your function definitions.